Welcome to the Know How video series for users of the Avaya Collaboration Designer Snap-in. In this video, you'll learn how to create your first fully defined workflow. We're going to build the HTTP invoked workflow definition described in the Getting Started with the Avaya Collaboration Designer Snap-in guide. The workflow is triggered by an external web application and simply creates and sends an email with a given subject and message body from a specified sender to a specified recipient. Because this is a very simple workflow definition, we'll start by dragging the required objects onto the canvas, the send email task and the end event, and linking them like so. Then save the workflow definition and give it a title, which is now displayed in the toolbar. The next step is to specify the event that will invoke the workflow and to subscribe to receive occurrences of that event. Double click on the Start Event object to open the Start Properties dialog. You can change the label for this or any object displayed on the canvas to be more descriptive and make the workflow easier to read. A workflow definition can be invoked by an event generated by another workflow definition, a call event, a call intercept event, or, as in this case, an HTTP request from a RESTful web service client. Events and the data that comes with them are defined in the Collaboration Environment Event Catalog, which is administered on a via Aura System Manager. Some events in the catalog are predefined on the system. Others can be custom defined as needed. See the Getting Started guide for instructions on how to add your own events to the catalog. In this case, the event that we're going to use has already been added by an administrator and is available in the drop-downs, so select the family of events to which it belongs and its type. Notice that the event's output schema is automatically retrieved from the catalog and displayed. The schema is written in JavaScript Object Notation, or JSON for short, and defines the structure of the data items that will be passed to the workflow in the body of the initiating HTTP requests. Be aware that JSON is the only schema type supported by Collaboration Designer. Expertise in JSON isn't essential, particularly if, as in this case, you're working with simple data types like strings. However, to get the most out of Collaboration Designer, and to be able to use it as independently as possible, you'll find it valuable to have a working knowledge of JSON, JSON schema, and data types. Looking at the output schema, you can see that four data strings will be passed into the workflow when it is invoked, representing the email recipient's address, email subject line, the body of the email, and the email sender's address. To make this data available to tasks further along in the workflow, it needs to be stored in the variables object. The variables object acts as a repository for all data that is passed from task to task through a workflow. But before it can be stored, the schema for the data must be defined in the variables object. So, select OK to save the start event properties and double click on the variables object to open the variable properties dialog. The good news is, Collaboration Designer provides an editor to help you create the JSON schema. To begin, click the plus sign, enter a schema name and select Edit. Next, click plus and enter the name of the first variable which will store the email recipient's address. It's a string, so no need to change the default type, and click plus again to enter the second variable, and so on for all four. Clicking OK closes the editor and displays the generated JSON schema. All looks fine, so select OK again to save and close the dialog. Now we're ready to map the data output from the start event to the variables object. Open the start event properties dialog again, and select Output Mapping to open the Data Mapping tool. Data mapping is simply a matter of connecting the data items output from the start event on the left to the corresponding data variables on the right, like so. That's done, so save the mapping and select OK to save the start event properties. To complete the workflow definition, we need to configure the Send Email task so double-click to open its Properties dialog. Notice that it's possible to configure the task with static, hard-coded values in these fields. However, 
we want to use the variable values that will be passed into the workflow and which we have stored in the variables object. These values will be the input to the task, so select Input Mapping to open the Data Mapping tool. On the left are listed all of the variables that are available in the variables object, including some system variables and the email schema variables that we created previously. On the right, you can see a representation of the send email task's own built-in data schema. Mapping the output from the variables task to the input to the start event task is again simply a matter of connecting the corresponding items together, like so. Save the completed mapping and select OK to close the task properties. You can also map output data from a task, but for this simple workflow it isn't required. So let's end by saving the completed workflow definition. We'll validate, deploy and test the workflow in a separate video. Check out other videos in this series, available on the DevConnect portal at the URLs shown.